Welcome to Teach Me GP2040CE, the tutorial series that shows you how to get the most out of your GP2040 equipped controller or board. One of the questions I see pop up a lot about GP2040 is how do I remount my buttons? And in 0.7.7, uh, it's got a new way to do it, so I'm going to show you step by step how to do it and some other powerful ways you can remap your buttons the way you like them. Now before I go into the how and why, etc., what you're going to need, and you know, all the technique I'm going to show you, I want to kind of give some context, you know, how this is working, so it'll make more sense to you. And if you don't really need it, you can of course skip ahead. But uh, let's just consider, you know, a brook board or other control boards. Let's say you have a terminal or pin and it's labeled, hey, this will press P1, it'll press X, whichever and you wire up a button. Whenever you press this button, it's going to send X. We don't have any facility to change what this pin is, none at all. But GP2040 is different. So you'll have a pin, and it does have a label, sure, and a default mapping. So let's say we set this to X, and we have our button, it's gonna send X. But here's the thing, in web config, we can go and change what this terminal is, basically. We just need to know what the pin number is. So instead, let's say we make it send Y. And now we click our button and it's sending Y. So what we're doing is we're still getting a signal from that same button to that same pin, but we're just saying, well, this pin is no longer sending X, it's sending Y. So that's what we're gonna be doing with remapping. Okay, so let's get started. Now you're going to need a web browser. It doesn't have to be in private mode like I have here. Uh, and obviously you're going to need your controller. Now I'm using the Oat G16, but you don't have to use the same controller. Obviously the concepts are going to be the same across multiple controllers. I'm just going to be using it because it has all these nice extra buttons. I'm going to show you more advanced things later in the video. So what we want to do first is go ahead and hold start and then plug it in. That should put you into web config mode, and you'll notice it on the status screen here, but if you don't have the status screen, that's fine. Uh, the next step, we'll just make sure you're getting in the web config. So what we're going to do, come over to your web browser and 192.168.7.1. Hit enter, and it should load the configurator. If you're having problems there, uh, it could be that you have some security software in place or your network's already using .7, uh, which <laughs> might put you in a bad spot. So uh, other than that, I can't really spend a lot of time troubleshooting that. We're just gonna proceed. Now I'm using .7.7 .7 for this video, and if you haven't upgraded already, you can see my tutorial video, especially for the 042 line of how to do that. But we're gonna proceed, assuming you're using .7.7. .7. So let's begin. Okay, before we go and start messing with key bindings, uh, we wanna take a backup in case we accidentally lock ourselves out of web config by remapping start to nothing or something else. You know, just, that would be a bad time. So what we wanna do is come into data and backup and restoration and then save. Save it to a place you want to keep these backups and there you go. Okay, now that we've taken a backup and we have some measure of safety, let's go ahead and go to configuration, pin mapping. And this is where all the magic happens. So you'll see a bunch of stuff about profile, map buttons, etc. Just calm down, <laughs> wait a second. What we want to do, preferably, is generate a pin mapping of your controller. So what you do is just use this pin viewer button. It's gonna ask you, press a button, okay. Now I pressed my mix box up and that is pin 27. Now the G16 does have a toggle here that will make both of these use pin two, but I'm just gonna use the bottom position for the G16. Uh, the other Oat 42 products don't have that. Most other controllers don't have that. So it's really only a specialized case that you need to toggle that. Anyway, repeat this for your other buttons and just make notes. So you can go, if you have a map, and you can say, okay, that, let's toggle the color, it's pin 27. And just repeat that for your other buttons until you have a fully formed map. It's gonna make your life a little easier. You can just reference it as you start reprogramming stuff. All right, thanks to the magic of editing, here is my completed map for the G16. 
Uh, your map may look different, but some of the buttons will be similar. So just expect that. Uh, I would do a full map. If you just want to write them out, that's fine, or just you know draw them, do whatever. Just make sure you have a pin map. It really helps kind of visually, at least does for me. Now that we have a backup and a pin map, let's go ahead and show you how to do a basic remap. So the first thing is, once you're on this configuration pin mapping screen, like so, you're gonna notice that by default, you might see GP2040 in the corner and think, okay, yeah, I'm using GP2040, but what are these labels? A1, A2, S2, and S2? Well, this is just GP2040's native way of handling option buttons and such. So you also see B1, B2, and things like that, and it may not be too meaningful. What I suggest is you change this over to either X input or PS3, PS4. And that's just going to change the labels. So now you see guide, back, start, A, B, X, and so on. I know it's a little bit covered up by my inset window, but there you go. So now that makes a little bit more sense to me at least. Just remember if it's still stuck on GP2040, drop it down to you know, whichever one you prefer. Or, you know, if you uh, like switch buttons, then you can do that too. Anyhow, let's just keep it an X input for now. And let me show you the first approach to remapping, and that's kind of the mass approach, which is this button, map buttons with. So what you're gonna do is press that, and it's gonna ask you, hey, what's up for me? I'm gonna press my hitbox up, down, left, right, and then A, B, X, Y, LB, RB, LT, RT, back, start, uh, LS, RS, guide, and then that. Now, I don't have a function key, so I'm just gonna hit stop capture there. And if you let any of these just stick around for too long, it's going to skip them and quit out. So I've done a basic setup now, and let's take a look at how to map an individual button. So that's how to do a kind of generic setup that'll just capture everything. But what if you only want to do one, or what if you want to map something that's kind of non-standard, that's not accounted for in there? Well, we can do that. We can just do a single button remap. And the way to do it is, let's say I want to remap this guy right here. And that is pin 18 for me. So I'm gonna look over here. Right now it's set to function, but if I set it back to, let's say, LS, then it's going to send the left stick signal. And then what I'll, all I'll do is come down here to save, and there we go. And let's say I wanna set it back to function. So we'll use that later. Just do the same thing, just change it to function and save. It's really easy. Okay, after you finish remapping and saving, you can go ahead and use this reboot button and hit controller, and you'll be back to normal with your new remap buttons. So before we go into the next remapping topic, I feel it's good to give some context yet again to kind of help you understand. Now, if you've heard of the hitbox cross-up, you know it you know, looks like this and has these extra buttons on top and bottom, right? And these buttons, they're for left, down, right, and up. So you have an extra set of directional buttons. Isn't that tournament illegal? Well, there's a little way they work around this. And that is, well, no. We just map the stick to the left analog and these directional buttons to the D-pad. Hmm. So what if you could do that on GP2040? You can, let's show you how. Okay, so if you have a button box like the G16, T16, M16, etc., and you have these extra up buttons and etc., etc., well, guess what? You can use DDI. What's DDI? Well, it is short for dual directional input. And maybe if you, you know, you're looking through one of these and you notice near the bottom, it says DDI up, down, left, and right. That's what it is. So how do we configure that? Okay, so let's start taking advantage of DDI. What we're going to do is you can come down here. Let's say I wanted to map that secondary up button to DDI up. And I think the T16 does this by default, but the G16 does not. So change that, DDI up, and save. Now we just need to make sure DDI is enabled. So what we're gonna do is go into configuration and add-ons. 
Now we're going to go past turbo. Dual directional input is already turned on for me, but if it's not, let's say it looks like this, just, you know, click the switch and it'll be turned on. And generally I accept the default. So left analog, mixed, and leave this dual directional four-way joystick mode off. Then make sure you go down and save. From there, you should be good. And if you want to map something else using DDI, you can always go back to pin mapping or change what this is. So for some reason, I want this to be, you know, DDI left, I can do that. And then I just hit save again. And then once I'm done, I can hit reboot controller, and then I'll have my controller in regular mode again. The last feature I'm going to show in this video is profiles. Now, you probably saw it already that we have a base, a profile two, profile three, and profile four. And if you click on them, they look pretty similar to what we've already worked with. And a lot of the stuff is the same, but you know, how do I actually make use of these? How do I toggle between them? That's the rub. And I just want to give, again, some more context into, you know, what is profiles? What is a use case for them, right? So I'd like to give the example of old Neo Geo games, especially Neo Geo fighters. You know, you'd, uh, let's just say this is weak punch and this is strong punch weak kick and strong kick but here's the problem with some games this would be a some games you know they'll be b c and d right but other games it would be more like a c b d and what do you do if you can't remap or you just don't feel like remapping in game well you could set a profile that you know, the first one works as normal, and the second one has this alternate mapping. So that's what we're kind of show you how to do. Let's get started with profiles. So on the pin mapping screen, remember configuration pin mapping, you'll see those tabs. And before we can really make use of it, we need to set what's called a function button. And that can have a multitude of uses. But in our case, it's going to toggle profiles for us with another button, so we'll call that a hotkey. Anyway, let's scroll down, and a lot of controllers don't have a whole lot of option buttons. You probably have something for touchpad, and if you're looking at X input, this can be represented with this dash, because the next input doesn't really do much. Uh, in PlayStation 4 mode, it will work. Um, PlayStation 5, it should work. However, I never find myself using it, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cannibalize that a bit, scroll down and choose function. Now, I need to do this not just for profile one tab, so make sure we save it, do it for profile two, profile three, and profile four. So let's do it for two and then you get the idea, you can do it for three and four if you're gonna use those. All right, so now we have a function button mapped. Let's go back over to settings. So now that you have your function button set, let's just go on over to settings. And on settings, scroll down until you get to a section called hotkey settings. It's a big, looks kind of convoluted settings page. Uh, looks messy, but it's really not. We're gonna work with it here. So what we want to do is set up some hotkeys that will toggle to those profiles. And let's set up number one. So we're gonna enable this, so our function key plus, we'll say, let's do our top row of buttons. So X, we don't want any others right now. <laughs> and then we're gonna scroll through here until we see load profile one. So there we go. Now hit profile that, and we'll do Y. Load profile two. And as you can see, you can keep going with this through profile three and profile four, but make sure you come down here and save. All right, now that we have those hotkeys set, we can go back over to configuration, pin mapping, and scroll up. Now let's go to profile two, since we kind of have that set up. We have that function key, make sure you have that. Otherwise, once you toggle to it and try and come back, you won't be able to without going to web config. That's no fun. So right now you can do again the same kind of mapping that you did in you know, the first step, which is you can map them all on Moss with this button, 
and it'll guide you through the wizard. Now that may not you know map everything. So for example, I had this sill set to DDI down. If I wanted it set to, let's say, yeah, right, then I can do that. And then whenever you make changes like this, just make sure you save, and there we go. Okay. Once you have all your profiles set the right way, then go ahead, make sure you saved, and again, you can reboot into controller mode. Once you get into controller mode, you'll just hold down that function key and then whichever button corresponds to the profile you want to load, and then the key map is going to be loaded for that. So just a note, as it says here, try to avoid changing the buttons and your directions you have associated with switch profile hotkeys. So for example, since I mapped function X, and if I change where X technically is, then I have to go hunt that down if I want to change back to profile one. So if you change just the four main buttons and then set aside four other buttons, then you should be fine. One last segment I want to leave you with for in case of emergency, right? In case um, I kind of didn't map a start button or suddenly I remap stuff and I can't get into my controller. It's, I'm just having fits. All right, it's okay. Take a breath. This is why we made a backup in the opening of this. You did make a backup, right? Okay, I'll trust you. Anyway, on these Oak 42 controllers, it's really easy to get to the boot select button. And most controllers, most boards should have something similar. You just might have to take it apart. Anyway, on the Oat, I just need a little SIM tool and I touch that button with it and then plug in and I will be in boot cell mode. Now the video I made on updating firmware will tell you how to flash nuke and then install the firmware. So just use the same firmware version that you were on previously. So if there was a new version that came out, don't flash that yet. You want to flash the current version that you had. Then we'll show you how to go to data restore just to bring those settings back. So let's go get our data back. What we need to do, I left this tab open, but just to get back in the web config, we're going to hold start, plug in just like before. Now we're in web config mode and we just let's refresh it just to show you. There we go. And let's go ahead, go back to configuration, data backup and restoration. Scroll down and load. And I stash it here. So all we have to do is load that and then reboot back into controller mode and you should be set. So as you can see, there's a lot of powerful options in GP2040C when it comes to remapping controls. You can set up profiles so that, you know, you have one basic one that plays most games and maybe you have, you know, a few ornery games that just don't want to be mapped or don't have in-game mapping the way you like. Well, you can force it to work the way you want with profiles. Or if you have, you know, the kind of big buttons, lots of buttons kind of box, and you need to be somewhat tournament legal, then you can you know, map that second up with DDI up or map it a different way, however you like. So there's a lot of power under the hood. I encourage you to get in there and try it out. Okay, real quick before we're all done here, you know the drill, it's a YouTuber frame time. Please like, comment, subscribe, or you're gonna take a shell to the face. Anyway, this has been Zev with Teach Me GP2040CE.